my name is Christy, welcome back to my channel. I have a 4th of July celebration video for you today. This video is so simple. I made it out of t-shirts. Joanne was having a special, like five t-shirts for 12 or $14, I don't remember. So this is so affordable. Grab some t-shirts and you can make yourself a 4th of July dress. Some fun facts about the 4th of July. I'm gonna read them so I don't get them wrong. Wearing old glory violates the US flag code. Uh, <laughs> how many of you own a flag t-shirt, beach towel, shorts, headband, or any other item representing the U.S. flag? Turns out you're in violation of the U.S. flag code. Well, this video got real awkward real quick. <laughs> that being said, in this instance, a flag code is not enforced or even enforceable. Okay, all right. Won't get arrested by the flag police. Whew. Americans will enjoy 150 million hot dogs during the 4th. Hot dogs, that's much more uplifting. 17 facts you never knew about the 4th of July. I'll be the judge of that. Good housekeeping. John Adams wrote a letter to his wife about how memorable Independence Day would be in American history. I wonder what that letter was like. Hi, honey. Hey, just did this thing. It's gonna be huge. Celebrated with parades, bonfires, and fireworks. P.S. We're out of milk. Ooh, U.S. soldiers got a special treat on the 4th of July in 1778. Hey guys, donuts in a mess hall. Oh, it says I gave them a double ration of rum. All right, that's better than donuts. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Hit that bell for notifications. I'm so excited. Thanks for being here and happy 4th of July. Be safe. To get the maximum amount of fabric, I bought two XL blue t-shirts and two 3XL red t-shirts. A white t-shirt, I don't remember the size, and I'm realizing that there is a hole in one of the blue t-shirts. I guess that's why they were on sale. I also bought a sparkly 4th of July cotton fabric. I am taking advantage of the fact that there are no side seams on this shirt and cutting off the sleeves and the shoulder seams to widen the fabric area. Roscoe wanted to test the fabric for durability. Maybe that's how the hole got there. Now that the cute fabric tester has been removed, I have smoothed out the fabric in half so that I can pattern my dress from it. Both the dress and the fabric are folded in half and lined up on fold. I'm using fabric chalk to chalk around the edge before I cut it out, making sure I add a half inch seam allowance. Then fold the dress the other way and chalk around the edges to cut out and pattern the back of the skirt the same way as the front. Moving on to the bodice. Basically going to be doing it the same way, except this time I'm going to pattern onto paper so I can make some pattern adjustments. Smooth out my lines and then add a half inch seam allowance. So this is called the slash and spread technique. I'm going to make the bodice ruched in the middle. So I have cut lines starting from the middle to the side seam. I transferred it to another piece of paper and spread and taped down each of the segments about an inch and a half apart. The further you spread the segment, the more ruching will occur. So here is our new bodice pattern, still patterned from our dress. I prepared the blue t-shirts the same way I did the red t-shirts, cutting off the sleeves and the shoulder seams. Line up our new pattern piece, chalk around the edges, and then cut it out. The blue t-shirt is folded in half to cut out both pieces at the same time. And since it's no longer obvious which way is up, I've marked them with a T for top top. For top. Moving on, let's pattern now the back. Same way, fold the fabric and the dress in half, chalk around the edges, cut it out, leaving a half inch seam allowance. For the ruching, we're going to sew two lines of parallel basting stitches. A basting stitch just means the longest stitch on your machine. Since we'll be gathering these stitches, don't backstitch at the beginning or the end and leave long tails. Separate the bobbin thread from the top thread and then start gently pulling on one set. Pick your favorite. It doesn't matter. Just don't do both. Just gather and ungather until it is back to the original length of the bodice middle front piece. In my case, it was 10 inches. Now that it's the correct size, tie off the ends, flip them over so they are right sides together and pin in place to sew down the middle. I am sewing just beyond that last basting stitch. 
Be sure to zhuzh out the gathers as you go so that they lay nicely. This is going to be a super simple dress with no zipper. To attach the back piece, line it up with each side with right sides facing each other. And I'm being lazy and just sewing the sides on my serger. If you don't have a serger, a straight stitch on your sewing machine will work just as well. Line up and pin the two skirt pieces with right sides together. Either serge or sew the sides. I was lazy again and did it on my serger. To attach the bodice to the skirt, flip it right side out and then flip the bodice wrong side out. Shimmy the bodice down so that the raw edges meet. Pin up the side seams and then the middle seam and anywhere else you want to pin. Roscoe gives me a lick on my nose for encouragement. You're a cutie. Serge or sew the two pieces together. Yep, I'm being lazy again and just doing it on my serger. It's also a nice way to keep it stretchy. I tried it on and have pinned where I want the straps, one in the front and three fancy ones in the back. But before moving on to the straps, I have to hem the top. Fold over the top twice, just a quarter inch each time, and I decided to try a zigzag stitch, but ended up not liking the way it looked. So I seam ripped all of that out and then just did a regular straight stitch especially since it was already stretchy jersey material. I even attempted to further return it to its original size by not letting it stretch at all in the back. So it mostly turned out well, but every once in a while my sewing machine would skip a stitch. Super frustrating. I even threaded it, re-threaded it, bobbin, everything. I don't know, just something to deal with, but later. Strap time. I cut two 10 by two inch pieces of the white t-shirt and six pieces for the fancy spaghetti straps in the back. These measured seven inches by one inch wide. Magic. Fold all strips, the wider ones and the thinner ones in half with right sides together. Sew along each edge, leaving both ends open. Take a safety pin, which I'm gonna model like all the makeup tutorial YouTubers and attach it to one end. Close it, clo clo close it, and then feed it through the tube. They get real wrinkly. It's amazing what a quick press on your iron will do. On the thicker straps, fold one end in on itself about half an inch, then feed three of the spaghetti straps inside also about a half an inch. Then sew a square to secure it. It was difficult to get my sewing machine to sew over the thick layers of fabric. I even tried to use my scissors as I think they've been called a humper jumper. I might be making that up. Anyways, it's done. I'm going to sew on the back straps first so that I can more easily fit the front. Sew back and forth a few times with some zigzag stitches. Now that the back is done, it's easier to try it on again and see exactly where the front strap should fall. But before attaching the front straps, I did a little bit of hand sewing to finish off the raw edges and found another opportunity for a YouTube makeup tutorial moment. Why do they all do that? Anyways, I found where the strap should go and attached it with a few zigzag stitches. For the hem, I have clipped the seam allowance so that I can lay it in opposite directions to reduce bulk. Fold over a quarter of an inch twice and sew with a straight stitch along the very edge. You thought I forgot about the star fabric, didn't you? Well, you were right, because I almost did. So I'm going to turn it into a belt. I cut two three and a half inch strips, the longest the fabric would allow, and attach them together. Press the seam open, then fold in half with right sides together and sew the entire length of the fabric. To make a stylized end, sew diagonally from one corner, then pivot the fabric and continue sewing the length of the belt. When you get about five inches from the other end, stop sewing and then leave about a two inch gap so that you can turn it right side out. Continue sewing the other side, pivot the fabric, and then sew diagonally to the other corner. 
To make it turn right side out easier, clip the corners and the entire length of the seam allowance. To turn it right side out, well, the short end was easy. I just poked out the corners and it made a nice triangle. The other end was a little harder. I just had to shimmy it the entire length of the belt and pray that my loop turner was long enough to make it to the other side to poke out the corners. The only step left is to hand sew that two inch gap we left. I hope you've enjoyed this 4th of July t-shirt dress tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend and make it a great day, America. Thank you.